So I wanted to make a video on the uh, Cybertruck and why I don't think it's going to be a proper work truck. And there's a lot of things I just don't like about it. Um, let's find the right... Where is it? I don't like scrolling web pages. There we are. So there's some design aspects about this that I foresee being either annoying or being a problem. I'm just going to pause here. So one of the problems with this truck when it comes to doing truck stuff is you'll notice this quarter panel here and then there's this line and then above it what you have there essentially is a aerodynamic trim piece. At least that's the purpose for it. Um, now a lot of times when I've used my truck and when I watch other people use their trucks, it's just super handy to load stuff over the side. Whether it be you're loading uh, computers, bags of cement, uh, boxes of stuff, your tools. It's just so easy to throw something over the side. I mean, I guess you could move the truck and reposition it so the tailgate's always lined up with the thing you're loading. But honestly, there's times when there's, you know, space constraints. And it's just not convenient when you can just casually throw the item over the side. Uh, another problem with this design that I see is a lot of times when you load a pallet in a truck, you want to strap it down. Well, it's just so easy and convenient. To put one foot up on the top of the tire, put your leg over the edge of the bed, climb on into the back of the bed, and work with your straps. And that's not something you're really going to be doing with the Cybertruck. Um, and honestly, the loading's more the of the thing than the strap. You can always have your straps set up ahead of time before you load the pallet, but no one ever does that. <laughs> It's, I've never seen anybody do that, even myself. It's always, all right, throw the thing in. All right, got to strap it down. All right, got to climb in the bed and run the straps. <laughs> um, although you generally have to get over the thing that's in the bed too. So that's, uh, yeah. Uh, another thing, which is highlighted text you see here, is the supposed super tough composite bed. Well, this is Tesla we're talking about. They enjoy exaggerating things. It's plastic. Let's, let's just be real here. It, it has a plastic bed. And maybe I'll end up being wrong. I don't know. But everything from personal experience would indicate that this is a plastic bed. Like the uh, Rivian. And plastic beds, they just don't work for trucks. Um, because, like, let's say you're sliding a pallet into the back of your truck that has stuff on it. Most of the time, the nails for the bottom planks of the pallet aren't perfect. They're either cockeyed, hanging over at an angle, sometimes halfway sticking out. And they always end up cutting into your bed. Now, with a traditional spray-on bed liner on metal, it's fairly resilient semi self-healing as long as you're slitting the material and not peeling it off versus plastic that's going to tend to just shave off and I know from experience because one of my previous trucks came with a spray and bed liner with a plastic bed liner over it never liked it too lazy to take it out didn't have the truck long enough to care <laughs> But that thing was terrible because, I mean, it would just get sliced up and it looked like hell. Um, hopefully I'm wrong and this isn't a plastic bed, but uh, if it's not a plastic bed, why would you call it composite? Like, if this is metal, why don't you say, oh yeah, it's heavy metal bed with pre-spray-on bed liner or whatever, not, oh, well, it's composite. Um... And the only reason I'm assuming at this point that it's plastic is because Tesla also likes to exaggerate things with their seats. Oh, it's vegan leather. Okay, it's vinyl. It's really nice vinyl. Let's let's be realistically. <laughs>
So another problem that I see is this trunk. You know, it's handy if you want to do non-truck stuff in or whatever. But depending on how this is constructed, um, I don't like it. What I would like to believe is this is a sheet of metal, and then they folded over tabs on all four corners, welded the corners, and then put a uh, plastic liner in there so it'll uh, seal the tub and keep water out to some degree. Um, what I feel like it actually is going to be is just one big injection molded piece of plastic with maybe some uh, pieces of metal reinforcing it internally. And the problem with this is if I want to put anything heavy over that spot, it's either going to deform or cave in. So an example would be a steam jacketed kettle that I purchased and moved many years ago in my um, half ton truck. And I think that thing probably weighed around 1500 pounds. It was really heavy and it really made my truck sag. Well, that's 1,500 pounds setting on three different legs. Now, I may be wrong, but my understanding is, assuming the weight distribution of the unit itself is fairly even, those three legs are going to each have a third of the item's weight bearing down on them. So you're going to have a leg that terminates to a little tip that may be on the high end, two-inch diameter and you're going to be putting 500 pounds of weight on that spot. Is a plastic bed built to be durable enough to do that? I don't know. I don't I don't have a lot of faith in that. If it's evenly distributed, it'll definitely hold up better. Like sure, I'm sure this thing will take 2500 pounds as long as that 2500 pounds is spread out enough with enough points of contact. But 500 pounds on a four square inch area? Eh. Better make sure it doesn't line up on the uh, trunk door. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so the truck, the trunk and the uh, truck bed, that's a huge turn off for me. It's just a point of failure that's going to cave in or fail on me is the way I see it. I'm not aware of any real work trucks that have this option um, that people use for actual truck stuff. I mean, the Honda Ridgeline, the Rivian have them. Sure, they work great for piddly stuff, you know. You throw your ice and your beer down there, and then you throw your camp chairs on top, and, you know, cool. I mean, I could probably do that with an SUV. Probably do that with my Y. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it'll be fine for that. Maybe you throw a bunch of beach balls on top of it, and I'm sure it'll, it'll handle the weight of a couple beach balls. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, just uh, this this trunk, the door, no, that's not going to fly. Uh, and another issue I see is upfitting. So with that trunk there, definitely not going to be putting a fifth wheel hitch on that. A flip ball hitch for gooseneck trailer, eh, I don't know. Maybe they were smart enough to provide provisions for that. Hard to say. I mean, fifth wheel is probably a bit obscene for a truck this small. Uh, flip ball, gooseneck type hitch would make sense. I could see somebody pulling, you know, a uh, I don't know how big campers are. A 40-foot camper behind them, I suppose. There's people insane enough to do it with half tons. So, <laughs> uh, But you're probably not going to be able to put a uh, hitch in there for a gooseneck trailer. Um, I have a feeling they didn't plan for that, just based on overall impressions of this truck. Because it just does not feel like something a truck person designed. So... Yeah, I mean, that's going to be interesting if somebody wants to tow a fancy camper trailer with their Cybertruck. 
Um, same with toolboxes and some of the other upfitting accessories. You're not going to be able to put a flatbed um, bed. It's probably a better word for that, but you're not going to be able to turn it into a flatbed truck because, well, the bed's part of the structure. Um, toolboxes. I guess if you own an electric truck, you're probably not going to haul diesel around. <laughs> um, yeah, it just... It's not going to be good for upfitting. It's, it has a questionable bed strength and durability. If you want to tow anything beyond what a hitch and receiver can do, that's uh, going to pose an interesting challenge. One thing I do like about the bed um, that really is just a simple upfit in other trucks is the uh, l track along the side here. And I'm giving Tesla the benefit of the doubt. I'm really hoping they use standard l track and didn't decide to be dicks and make their own creative custom stupid dimensions because l track is very versatile and you can get accessories for anchor points and stuff that are really handy. It's something I've wanted to do to my van, but I've just been too lazy to do it. Also it does have your traditional uh, corner tie down points from the looks of it. Although I don't know if that's a fixed or if it's a uh, flip down design. So that'll be interesting. Oh, then the next thing I wanted to talk about, let's see if we can get a better shot on this from Tesla's website, is the mirrors. So from my experience with owning multiple trucks, these mirrors are junk. I can already tell they're junk just by looking at them. You're not gonna be able to see anything in those mirrors. They're a weird shape. They're a lot smaller than most truck mirrors that I've dealt with are. And they're, they don't offer, as far as I can tell at least, any kind of towing mirror option. Um, so yeah, it's gonna give you bad visibility. And, and you know, you could say, oh, well they got cameras. Why would I need mirrors when they have cameras? And it's like, okay, sure, cameras are great, but cameras, um, especially with uh, Tesla's setup, only give you a mono view, and it's 2D. There's no real like depth perception, per se. So when I look at a normal mirror, um, I tend to look and focus at what's closest to me, and then I'll focus further out in the distance. Can't really do that as easily on a screen. I've tried, I've tried to figure it out. I still struggle with the uh, camera on my Tesla. Um, and then the mirrors aren't great, so. It's, uh, yeah. And that's why like towing mirrors are especially important though, because usually they're bigger, so you have more viewing area. Um, also, the towing mirrors give you two different perspectives. So usually like your upper mirror, from my experience, is better at stuff closer to you. And then your lower mirror has a bit of a curve to it and kind of gives you a bit of a long distance view. And that's very handy, especially when pulling a trailer, because you want to be able to like check your blind spots and check what's next to you and then look further down to make sure someone's not coming down from the distance and you have enough time to get over or do whatever you're doing. And it's just, you can't really do that on a camera system. And, and the other thing I guess worth mentioning with the camera system is the fact that that image you're looking at is a fixed resolution. I don't know what the resolution of a mirror is but let's say that that churn, turning uh, image that pops up for your on your screen when you want to turn, let's just say that tiny square is 4K. It's not, but let's just say it is. Do you really think that mirror on the side of your truck is only 4K resolution wise? I don't know. I I don't I don't feel like <laughs> that mirror is going to be a. It's not a. Oh, it's a 4K mirror. I can only see 4K worth of stuff. No. It's probably almost limitless. Just whatever you can focus on and you know zone into. So I'm not fond of these mirrors. 
In all fairness, the Lightning doesn't offer towing mirrors either, but the Lightning community has figured out that there are compatible part numbers that you can swap out for from Ford directly. And then you just have to deal with some minor compatibility issues and um, it's fairly straightforward to, to uh, do the swap. So yeah, that's um, something else. I don't know. So yeah, the mirrors are a disappointment. I'm gonna probably do a dedicated video on that though. And the other thing I wanted to talk about is the powered tonneau cover. Now, they show it loading up dirt and closing and stuff, but let's be real. Anyone smart is going to know that's not going to work in the long term. Sure, maybe a few times you throw dirt in it, you get dirt all over the tracks, the thing opens and closes. But unless you're constantly cleaning that thing, lubricating it, and staying on top of it, it's going to jam, it's going to bind, something's going to make it go out of whack, and then you're going to be pissed off. And it's already been a problem like that with the Rivian. Um, I don't remember what the reasoning was, though, for the Rivian um, having issues with its power tonneau cover. I don't remember if like, it was skipping a gear tooth and it was messing up the timing or if the mechanism was just failing in general. But yeah, not a fan of the power tonneau cover. I'm sure it's nice when it works, but I feel fairly confident that it's just going to break. Especially if you're dealing with dirt and rock or you drive in like winter climate with all that salt and stuff. It's just going to fail. I'd love to be wrong. I'd love to see that thing just last and be bulletproof, but eh, we'll see. We'll give it time. <laughs> um, and I don't know... There's a good picture. The other thing that I found interesting that I didn't like that may or may not be a good feature, I don't know. So I have mixed feelings with steering wheel. Not too concerned about the shape. The buttons are tactile buttons, it sounds like, not capacitive. I don't like the fact that the shifter and the, um, the uh, turn signal stock are both gone now. So, if I'm doing truck stuff where I need to wear gloves and I'm getting in and out of the truck a lot, I don't want to take those gloves off. Tactile buttons are going to be fairly good for that. It's going to be hard to feel though for those turn signal buttons because you're not going to have the feel with gloves on. Versus with a normal steering wheel with turn signal stock and shifter stock, well, if I have both my hands on the steering wheel, I'll keep the uh, thumb and pointer finger gripped on the steering wheel, extend the other fingers, reach out, and interact with the uh, turn signal stock. No big deal. I don't want to have to fish around for the buttons for the turn signal. That's just bad design. And as far as I know, Tesla's the only people dumb enough to think the turn signal stock and the shifter stock's not necessary. The shifter stock, eh, it's kind of up for debate. Um, I think realistically it's going to be a problem when you're doing maneuvering with a trailer because you're going to be forced to do a bunch of swiping on the screen to um, change direction back and forth if you don't get things perfectly lined up the first try, which I don't know. I'm not very good at backing trailers. Maybe other people are, but um, yeah, I just, I see that getting annoying. It will be interesting to see if um, Tesla manages to copy Ford's tech because I think with the Fords, they have like a little knob or dial that you can play with on the dash for backing trailer rather than turning the steering wheel. But I have no firsthand experience with that. So I don't know what to think on that. The other thing I don't like is the steering wheel response sounds like it it uh, varies based on your speed. So at lower speeds, um, you won't have to turn the wheel as far to turn as aggressively. 
And when it comes to backing trailers, generally speaking, you're doing fine adjustments, not like aggressive adjustments. So I don't know how that's going to play out. I think, I feel like it's going to be a problem, to be honest. Um, you're going to end up turning the wheel too much and then having to over adjust the other direction and it's just going to be annoying. But yeah, those are kind of my first impressions. There's some other stuff I see that I don't like about it, which should, uh, I think the mono, the mono wiper is a bad design. I don't think there's any good images of it. Um, from the looks of it, it's going to leave a pretty big blind spot on the passenger side where it can't reach. Not a fan of the doors. It's going to have the same problem all the Tesla doors have, where if you live in a cold climate, if you don't preheat your car, you're not going to be able to get into your car because the doors go up into the door frame. But yeah, um, I don't know. The biggest thing is the bed. I mean, the bed's the most important part of the truck. That's what makes a truck a truck. And I'm just, I'm not impressed. I, it's a bad design in my opinion. And there's a reason why you haven't seen a radical design change in truck beds because it's it's just a good design that works. Um, you either get a traditional truck bed with sides on the bed or you get a uh, truck bed that's flat with um, little, oh, what's the word? There's like pieces of folded metal on the sides that you stick posts in for, for side panels, like, like a cattle gate. Um, or a pig pen gate, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's just this not gonna be able to throw stuff over the side. You're probably not gonna want to put too much weight on that trunk door. Um, and if it's plastic, like I'm thinking, like the Rivian, well, I guess, uh, try not to, sh to slide things into the bed that are gonna scratch it to death and scrape all the plastic off. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm sure there'll be some interesting opinions that I won't agree with. You have your right to be wrong. <laughs> uh, the matter of the fact is, this truck was designed by somebody who doesn't use trucks for a living. And I think I'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching.